it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Stone Brewing Company and this is a hazy double IPA and it's called Peak Conditions. Right, I know Stone have been bought out. I know they're now owned by a big brewery. But still, still, if, you rem if you've been drinking craft beer long enough, you will remember that tingling sensation, that little bit of, not a little bit, a big amount of excitement you had when you were able to pick up a bottle. They were bottles back in the day, a bottle of stone double IPA. There was a level of, ooh, how good is this double IPA going to be? Uh, of course, uh, since then, Stone have become quite a large brewery in America. They've been bought out. The standard of the beer, lots of people know this, is not at the same level as what Stone once had. There's not so much a level of excitement anymore when you pick up a Stone double IPA. But for nostalgic reasons, for nostalgic reasons, I'm going to hold on to this can of beer. I'm going to tell myself I've got a stone hazy double IPA and this is going to be fantastic. And I'm going to go into this beer review with loads and loads of optimism of the stone brewing company of the past. This can actually still says it's an independent a uh, craft brewery in America. Um, but I know, I, who, who bought them? It was a Japanese company, I think, that, that invested a massive amount of money into Stone Brewing Company. But anyway, let's get into it. 300 and, uh, it's a 12 fluid ounce can, 8.1% ABV, described as a hazy double India pale ale, Oh, with added passion fruit, orange and guava. Ah, right, okay. I haven't read that bit yet. So with some... Fruit additions, my favourite. I'm still going to be optimistic though. I'm still going to be optimistic, even though they've added guava and orange and passion fruit flavour. I'm still going to tell myself I've got a stone double IPA. <laughs> One finger, white head, um, good levels of slow moving carbonation. It's a hazy orangey amber colored beer no sediment in the bottom of the glass let's get the aroma bit of sweetness bit of sweetness in there You get a tingle of those fruit additions. Like maybe it's a, there's a little bit of concentrate in there. Like a fruit concentrate added into the into the beer. But it doesn't smell too bad. It doesn't smell too bad. It's it, it's like a refrained, just maybe a <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, maybe a small addition of that fruit concentrate. There's a bit of passion fruit, of course, a bit of guava, of course, a bit of orange, of course. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Oh, 
So I wasn't being... I wasn't being sarcastic. Um, I wasn't being um, a Mr. Know-it-all. I wasn't being... Like... I was just giving you my history of stone brewing companies and their double IPAs. And the fact that I, there's a lot of people out there back in the day. But if you, if you rewound the clock to 2012, I went to the Great British Beer Festival and everybody was buzzing. Or well, the people in the know, there were, there were camera people there who didn't know who stone brewing company were. But back in 2012, there were people in the know that knew that there was Stone Brewing Company beer in the Great British Beer Festival. And the people in the know were queuing and there was excitement and there was queues at the American Bar for the beer and all the bottles sold out really quickly. And fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I tried a lot of the beer there that day. Tried a lot of the Stone Double IPA that day. And it was all terrific, all absolutely terrific. Rewind, or oh, fast forward, sorry, other way around. Fast forward, press fast forward on your tape deck, not, not rewind. So fast forward to 2023, um, 11 years later. Wow. Fast forward 11 years later. And this is nothing like the old Stone Brewing Company. It's drinkable. I'm not going to start jumping up and down, banging my head against a brick wall. I've done that enough. I've done that enough with beer. I bang my head against a brick wall with Brew Dog, and I've probably done it with Stone before now when they had that German brewery and they were putting beer into Tesco. It just wasn't great quality, and everybody was scratching their head as to why Stone's beers are not the same, not as they were. Never lasted. Stone actually sold their brewery in Germany to Brewdog. <clears throat> it's a very mundane, very average, extremely average beer with, dare I say it, they've gone down the route of ice cream concentrates where they've they've... It, this is not fruit additions in the beer. This is concentrate. This is like a bottle of cordial, a bottle of blackcurrant cordial or something like that. You know, they've tipped in guava and passion fruit and orange, orange cordial into a beer, which, I mean, you think a stone, I, you think a stone double IPA back in the day when they used to make their 100 IBU beers and, you know, they would wreck your palate. This... This is tame. This is really, really tame, mundane, run-of-the-mill, average Joe beer. Sad, isn't it? And I get asked a lot of questions on the channel. You only review beer that gets sent to you, or you only review beer... <laughs> from supermarkets. Well, I actually bought this, bought this in Cardiff uh, with my own, it was 4 99 £4.99 a can. So I actually bought this one myself. Uh, but I get accused a lot of not supporting the uh, exciting breweries. But there's a reason for that. There, there's a reason why I don't overly support exciting breweries anymore. Because I used to support exciting breweries. I used to support Brewdog. I used to support Stone Brewing Company. I used to support Tiny Rebel. I used to support Stuart Brewing Company in Scotland. And there's a whole host, a whole host of breweries that I could reel off of, of who I used to, Magic Rock, Magic Rock Brewing Company. If you've been in the game, if you've been in this brewing game, this, this, this reviewing game or whatever, for as long as I have, and you've seen these exciting breweries become mundane, 
have exactly what they were fighting against. They become, they become these mundane breweries. <laughs> it puts us. It makes you laugh that that I'm accused of not supporting these up and coming. You know, even Cloudwater for a time they touched into Tesco. They fully reverted back now. They fully kind of changed courses to what direction they wanted to go in. Thank goodness for that. But I don't overly jump on the bandwagon with a new up and coming brewery in anymore because because I've been disappointed so many times. Magic Rock disappointed me. Stone Brewing Company disappointed me. Brewdog disappointed me. Tiny Rebel massively disappointed me. I'm from Wales. <coughs> Great Welsh brewery. Everybody in the UK wanted to drink Tiny Rebel. It was, you know, it was a fantastic thing for Wales. And then, and then the producing these cordial beers, like, like all of the other big... Yeah, they're big breweries now, aren't they? They're big breweries and they... It's, it's disappointing, but I'm, I'm, I'm way past the point of jumping up and down, tearing my hair out. Caring, really. Caring's the word. Way past the point of, like, l losing sleep over the whole situation. Because I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about it. I'm going to rate this. It's really poor from stone. Pretended that I had a fantastic stone double IPA in my hand and, and the, the, the reality is that it's just a fruit concentrate infused beer. Four out of ten. Four out of ten from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.